big news, big news. So I was right. My video on Hannibal ancestry and all that, and I said, I was right. Boom, Brown University, go for it. The study found their genetic profiles looked most like those of prehistoric inhabitants of Sicily. <laughs> and the Aegean. Man, this is crazy. So the Carthaginians were related to Sicilians and the Aegean, which means Greece. They were related to the Greeks. <laughs> oh, for, I feel so vindicated, guys. I feel so vindicated. Man, this is, uh, this is my time to shine. Let's continue, Brown University. You've got my attention. Yeah. Hello, noble ones. Welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking and I found something really interesting. Check this out. So this is an article titled Ancient Mediterranean DNA Confirms Old Truths. People Contain Multitudes by Jill Kimball. And this is directly from Brown University. And for those of you who don't know, this is Brown University. It's actually quite interesting. Look at this. Got a lot of stuff. Interesting courses and whatnot. And, and they are based in Providence, Rhode Island, United States. Now, before we jump into it, I'm always fascinated by DNA studies, particularly when they're done right. And this one is specifically about a population that we have discussed on this channel multiple times, the Phoenicians. So, what have they found out about the Phoenicians? <laughs> you think you can already tell. Oh, this is going to upset a certain community. Let's go. An ancient DNA study co-authored by Brown archaeologist Peter van Dommelen illustrates the complexity of human migration and identity shifts over time. Identity is complicated. People develop a sense of self, not just from ancestry, but also from language, cultural traditions, environment and personal experiences. So far, so good. For Peter van Dommelen, a professor of anthropology and archaeology at Brown University, goodness gracious with the names, Zhukovsky Institute for Archaeology and the Ancient World, that's the timeless takeaway from a recent analysis of ancient DNA he co-authored with 70 other researchers. So this is a big deal. This is not like a little thing. This is a big deal. 70 other, so 71, I guess, researchers. The study published in the journal Nature was led by scientists at Harvard University and Germany's Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology. So the study, ladies and gentlemen, is here. I already checked it out and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to uh, actually read all of the specific details on the DNA analysis. But this is actually, for once, a good summary. The researchers conducted the largest ever DNA analysis of people who lived in the ancient Punic communities across the Mediterranean, from the Iberian Peninsula to North Africa to the Middle East. Their analysis revealed something that seemed counterintuitive, despite the fact that Punic people originally came from the eastern Mediterranean, an area called the Levant, those who were living in Punic settlements several centuries later showed almost no trace of Levantine origin, uh, ancestry. All right, so let me first explain a little bit. We're throwing around a few words here and I think we need to explain it. So as you know, I first started by talking about the Phoenicians and of course the Phoenicians are a Levantine people. They come from the Levant, meaning sort of the Eastern Mediterranean, and then they have settled and colonized certain areas, including, among others, North Africa, but as they say, Iberian Peninsula, so kind of modern day in Spain, and then parts of the Middle East where they were, of course, originally from. Thing is, though, that as centuries continue, what do these Phoenicians become? Well, Carthaginians, hence Punic. So, what the study is saying is that even though in their very origins, and there's no doubt about this, by the way, in academia, regardless of what other communities say, the original founders of Carthage were absolutely from the Levant, which means they were Semitic. That is a fact. That's why they're not even discussing other possible origins, like the idea that perhaps the original Phoenicians were in fact from the Horn of Africa or were from Central Africa. From Se that's nonsense. And in fact, that's why they do say, as it is correct, based on real academia, they were from the Levant. But what they are saying now is that as several centuries, the DNA study seems to suggest that by the time they become Carthaginians, they're not Semitic anymore, at least not in large numbers. So what are they now? What are they? 
International news headlines claimed that the finding appended the world of archaeology and challenged long-held historical assumptions. But Van Dommelen doesn't think the study's findings is all that surprising, so he was expecting it. There seems to be a narrative today that our countries and economies are more interconnected than they used to be, but we have evidence that the ancient Mediterranean was a big interconnected web of people and ideas. Absolutely. I mean, that's obviously yes. That's why if you remember oftentimes when I talk about interconnectivity in ancient communities I always make a distinction between port cities where I do say a certain level of multi-ethnicity at least up to a certain extent because of the fact that clearly the Mediterranean was a conduit of commerce, trade and exchange and conquest. Uh, but if you go to like a medieval land like I don't know Czechia or even if you go to Germanic lands or Celtic areas in the classical period well, these would have been quite ethnic homogeneous. So I agree with the professor. Open quotes, anthropologists have always said that the language, culture and genetics are connected but they don't necessarily inherently always go together, close quotes. Van Dommelen said, open quotes, throughout history we see people move to new lands, adopt different customs, mingle with people from different cultures and create new languages. Their identities shift and don't necessarily align with their ancestry. It's what we have seen happen over the course of American history. Evidently, it's also what happened with Punic people in the Mediterranean. Okay, so what were they then? By the time they become Carthaginians, what were they? Levantine losses. Punic people, also known as Venetians or Carthaginians, first migrated from the Levant as early as the 12th century BC, known as adept sea voyagers and purveyors of a unique purple dye made from seashells. They sailed to and settled on islands across the Mediterranean and on the mainland of present-day Spain, Morocco, Algeria and Libya. Their larger settlement was the city of Carthage in present-day Tunisia. Absolutely. The Punic Empire thrived for centuries as a dominant power in the Mediterranean until the rise of the Roman Republic. Over the course of about 100 years, beginning in the 3rd century BC, Rome gradually loosened the seafarers' hold on the Mediterranean in the Punic Wars, which culminated in the violent destruction of Carthage in the 2nd century BC. The word destruction sometimes can be misunderstood a little bit. They weren't completely and utterly annihilated. But that's important to underline because when we say destruction in the modern sense, it can be complete and utter annihilation due to the kind of power of our weapons. But when it comes to the classical period and even the Middle Ages, when they say a city has been destroyed, it usually doesn't mean that it's been leveled to the ground. And in fact, Carthage did continue to exist, even though they did sack it. They did do that. And also, there was no salting of the earth. That's nonsense. The researchers' DNA samples come mostly from the bones of people who lived in the second half of the Punic Empire's history, between the 6th and the 2nd century BC. The 210 samples came from 14 Punic settlements across the Levant, North Africa, Iberia, Sicily, Sardinia, Algeria, and the Balearic island Ibiza. We are literally talking about a very vast genetic pool. There is ample evidence that these people practiced Levantine customs, built Levantine-style structures, and spoke the Levantine-derived Punic language, Van Dommelen said. So they are maintaining the cultural connection to their origin. Yet, according to DNA analysis, almost none of them had any trace of Levantine ancestry. And this is surprising. This is surprising. Instead, the study found their genetic profiles looked most like those of prehistoric inhabitants of Sicily <laughs> and the Aegean. Man, this is crazy. This is crazy. Big news, big news. So the Carthaginians were related to Sicilians of this period and the Aegean, which means Greece. And I mean, when you say Aegean, usually you mean Greece and some parts of the coast of the Anatolian Peninsula. But in this situation, I, considering the connection with Sicily, they were related to the Greeks. That is massive. This is math, not only also because it's a huge blow to all those that were pushing for this kind of nonsense. <laughs> oh, for my, I feel so vindicated, guys. I feel so vindicated. Honestly, this is massive. This is mad. Yeah, that's me right there. That's me right there. Finally. And, and this is... <laughs> Goodness gracious. Man, I feel so vindic. One after the other. The other day, a study from the University of Florence proved me right. And today, this? 
Man, this is, uh, this is my time to shine. Let's continue, Brown University. You've got my attention. Some of them also showed varying degrees of North African ancestry, especially those who died after 400 BC. Absolutely makes sense, because clearly that's where they lived, at least in this area, I would imagine. Reflecting the growing influence of Carthage in the Mediterranean. Absolutely. Open quotes. That seems to show there were close connections between the Punic settlements in Sardinia, Sicily, Greece, as I was saying, North Africa, Ibiza, and Spain. Van Dolmen, uh, close quotes. Open quotes again. Their settlements seem to be more connected with each other via maritime routes. Yes, I would say so. If the DNA is in fact similar, I mean, we probably need more samples to be completely definitive when it comes to the expanse of all of this, but that the core, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It does than with the local neighbors in their hinterlands. Ooh, wait, I need to read this one again. Their settlements seemed to be more connected with each other via maritime routes. So there is more connection between this maritime routes than with their local neighbors in the hinterlands. These are the hinterlands, guys. Africa is the hinterlands. I was right. I was right my video on hannibal ancestry and all that and i say i was right boom brown university go for it man this is uh what a day Ooh, what a day <sighs> gg it's comparable to what happened with early white settlers in north america right the colonies were more closely connected to each other than they were to people in the interior parts of the continent. Yes, absolutely, of course. There was a connect. Yeah, you have early white settlers coming from Europe, whether it be Dutch, whether it be English, whether it be Germans, whatever it is. And then they, they settled in North America. Of course, they're going to be closely connected because they share a common culture rather than being connected with people in the interior parts of the continent, meaning in that case Native Americans. Yeah, sure, I mean, Native Americans wanted to mind their business and do their own thing. They Obviously, they're not as connected. It makes perfect sense. So it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So basically, these people are coming from the Levant, but then as hundreds of years pass by, and I mean, it makes sense due to the fact that, you know, you've got the, the entirety of the Anatolian Peninsula, you've got power of Greece, you've got Sicily, and Greek Sicily, in fact, and all these things. And then, yeah, basically, they they expand, they grow. I'm surprised there isn't any Celtic connection to this area, to be honest. But since we do know that there were some, at least some Celtic surnames in Carthage are present. But then again, if the DNA study doesn't show Celtic, I guess it was probably a minority. But yeah, it makes sense that these people are here, initially Semitic in origin. Then basically they become Greeks at this point. Greeks native Sicilians, and then, yeah, they connect among themselves rather than connecting with people. I still believe that, at least by the time Carthage had fully grown, there would have been some, for instance, black people living in Carthage, but I always said it was going to be a minority. DNA proves it. If you're enjoying this video so far, please take a moment to check out my Patreon page. With as little as a $5 support, you can help us ensure that we can continue to produce high quality and high researched content. And at the same time, you get access to polls, extra videos, unlisted streams, and much more. Thank you so much. Okay, when exactly did Punic people's Levantine route disappear? That's a very good question. Van Dommelen said researchers may never know for sure. Before the 6th century, it was standard cultural practice to cremate the dead, leaving behind no trace of DNA. Right. Open quotes. The funerary rituals seem to have changed in the 6th century BC when we start to see more people burying their dead. Close quotes. So, open quotes again, that raises new questions. When did that genetic fingerprint disappear? When and why was the Canaanite Phoenician culture and language adopted by people without any detectable Levantine ancestry? Close quotes. It is a very good question, but as I say, it's a really difficult one to answer because this entire area, as I always say, has always been multicultural and multi-ethnic, Egypt included. So this makes perfect sense. And not to mention the way the Egyptians represent, for example, the Libyans, as we always see that wall, very light-skinned, makes sense now. You know, as I was saying, this is the full study. Punic people were genetically diverse with almost no Levantine ancestors. That's crazy. Almost no Levantine ancestors at all. It's crazy. Well, I, I guess it makes sense if they sever 
connections with the motherland. So like imagine that initial group of people, we don't know how many they were when they moved Dido or Dido, the mythological founder of Carthage, the queen. We don't know how many that would have been. Probably still quite substantial because it immediately became an important settlement and then started trading. So that must have been substantial. But of course, if you have hundreds of years and the connection now it's, it's gone, then clearly the more people go and the more people from Greece, from the Anatolian Peninsula, from Sicily, from all these areas start together with them and mingling and joining the town and the area uh, together with some locals from North Africa, then it makes sense that after a few hundred years, the initial Semitic DNA is as they, uh, still almost entirely gone. It's kind of crazy. And so he says here, just for the beginning, the maritime Phoenician civilization from the Levant transformed the entire Mediterranean during the first millennium BC. However, the extent of human movement between the Levantine Phoenician homeland and Phoenician Punic settlements in the central and western Mediterranean has been unclear in the absence of comprehensive ancient DNA studies. Here, we generated genome-wide data for 210 individuals, including 196 from 14 sites traditionally identified as Phoenician and Punic in the Levant, North Africa, Iberia, Sicily, and just like we read, earlier on. Very, very technical, just to read you a little bit here, the raw DNA sequences for individuals newly sequenced in this study are deposited in the European Nucleotide Archive under accession number PRJEB86313. Their processed genotype data is pseudo-haploid. Eigenstrat format can be obtained from the Harvard Dataverse repository. And here is the, the link. So if we open this link, what this means is that you can go and check the data. You can have the full description and study it yourself. Like if you want to double check, if you want to do further analysis, see there's access data set right here. You can download the zip, and it, I, which I think is fantastic that they are allowing everyone to check this out and to confirm their analysis. And here it says that the newly reported data can be accessed from the European Nucleotide Archive using accession number. And here it is. So all of this to say, this is open source open source guys appreciate that the archaeologists have some educated guesses perhaps many of the first levantine settlers married people from the islands they colonized and punic people's levantine ancestry diminished quickly as a result very likely even as they continued practicing levantine traditions yes because the culture stayed the language stayed makes sense perhaps those early colonizers weren't all levantine the seafaring settlers may have been a mix of eastern and western mediterranean people so basically it's bringing up the idea i'm surprised they didn't get cancelled by saying this but hey man i appreciate you so uh, that takes some um, some courage so basically saying yeah a mix of so the original phoenicians may have been a mix of western and eastern in the sense that maybe initially they were from that area but Sure. In the years to come, Van Domelen and his colleagues will search for answers. He's already working with Spanish peers on an examination of the cultural changes Punic settlements underwent in the 8th, 7th and 6th century BC in modern-day Spain. And he'll continue a long-standing evaluation. Okay, an ancient settlement excavation, sorry, settlement of Sardinia. Yeah, Sardinia has got it. Sardinia is another completely different chapter. N not for this, but there is so much to say when it comes to Sardinia because islands have a lot of dominations and a lot of movement of people and cultures, of course. Phoenicians colonize as influence. Yeah, I mean, my town, Palermo, was founded by Phoenicians. So I am interested in knowing what Phoenicians looked like, spoke like, thought like their culture because they are the ones that founded. Open quotes, over the course of a century, all of the pottery they used for eating and drinking changed close quotes, uh, they produced, open quotes again, they produced it locally with their own clay, but they started using different techniques. Well, that's normal. Um, it's still a Phoenician style, yes. And then he closes by saying, but we have evidence that the ancient Mediterranean was a big interconnected web of people and ideas. It wasn't just Greeks and Romans. It was a lot more diverse and a lot more complicated. Well, of course, it's not just Greeks and Romans, but I mean, in these situations, so you're getting like, Greeks, Sicilians, and Anatolians a little bit basically end up creating with in merging with the original Semitic, they create basically a new people. That's the idea. Absolutely fascinating. All right, well, this was fascinating. I hope that you enjoyed it. Big news, big news. I'm happy to report. Man, I was right. <laughs> Have a good one.